In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. And therefore I ask the Blessed Mary Ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And let us pray. Father, you have given us the mother of your son to be our mother also. Grant us that by obeying the appeals of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we may always walk through prayer and penance for the kingdom of Christ and obtain eternal happiness. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. The first reading from the book of Jeremiah. I have loved you with an everlasting love. I will be the God of the clans of Israel. It is the Lord who speaks. They shall be my people. The Lord says this, they have found pardon in the wilderness, those who have survived the sword. Israel is marching to his rest. The Lord has appeared to him from afar. I have loved you with an everlasting love, so I am constant in my affection for you. I build you once more, you shall be rebuilt, Virgin of Israel. Adorned once more with your tambourines, you will go out dancing gaily. You will plant vineyards once more on the mountains of Samaria. The planters have done their planting and they will gather the fruit. Yes, a day will come when the watchmen shout on the mountains of Ephraim. Up, let us go up to Zion to the Lord our God. For the Lord says this, shout with joy to Jacob, hail the chiefs of nations, proclaim, praise, shout. The Lord has saved his people, the remnant of Israel. This is the word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm will be sung. Israel will gather him, a 
and guard him as a shepherd guards his flock. The Lord will guard us like a shepherd guarding his flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob, has saved him from an overpowering hand. They will come and shout for joy on Mount Zion. They will stream to the blessings of the Lord. The Lord will guard us like a shepherd guarding his flock. Then the young girls will rejoice and will dance. The men, young and old, will be glad. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will console them, give them gladness for grief. The Lord will guard us like a shepherd guarding his flock. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus left Gerizimet and withdrew to the region Tyre and Sidon. Then came out a Canaanite woman from that district and started shouting, Sir, son of David, take pity on me. My daughter is in torment by a devil. But he answered not a word. And his disciples went and pleaded with him, Give her what she wants, they said, because she is shouting after us. He said in reply, I was only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But the woman had come up and was kneeling at his feet. Lord, she said, help me. He replied, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the house dogs. And she retorted, ah, yes, sir, but even the house dogs can eat the scraps that fall from their master's table. And then Jesus answered her, woman, you have great faith. Let your wish be granted. And from that moment, her daughter was well again. The Gospel of the Lord. The last recorded words of Mary in the scripture from St. Luke tells us that Our Lady said, do whatever he tells you. So then we should not be surprised if we hear God calling us today to do something significant and special, 
something that will make a real difference in our lives and in the lives of others. You will know God's call when you hear it because it will be definitive and challenging. Do not be afraid. If you answer as Mary did, I am your servant, Lord, that it be done to me according to your will. Then God will give us the grace that we need to transform the world from within. And sadly, many people today are losing touch with our Blessed Mother's Son, Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life. And they are missing out on the joy and the hope that believing in Jesus brings. Our mission as true disciples of Christ is to transform our world from within. And we do this gently by inviting our brothers and sisters to a new friendship with Jesus and by convincing them as that when you let Christ into your life, you lose nothing, nothing at all. But it makes you free and beautiful and great. Today, let us place ourselves in the presence of Mary and her Immaculate Heart, remembering that the only goal of attention to Mary, as the only goal of anything we do, is to reach Jesus through Mary. It is simple Catholic wisdom that the one of the most effective, reliable, and enjoyable and tender ways of growing closer to Jesus is by holding the hand of his blessed mother. I recall the word, words of St. Benedict of Clairvaux. Let us not imagine that we obscure the glory of the Son by the honor we lavish on the mother. We stretch out our hands to our blessed mother and she embraces the sick and the forgotten, the poor, the sinful, the troubled. And we have come to know her as comforter of the afflicted, refuge of sinners, health of the sick, help of Christians. As any good mother will display a special love for whichever of her children might be sick, troubled, or ignored by others, so too does Mary for her spiritual children. And throughout history, Mary has been reaching out to her children in need through private revelations such as those of being worthy of belief that we find ourselves here in Fatima. We live in a privileged age of the Marian age or era we see international Marian centers such as Lourdes and Fatima, La Salette and Chechtahova and many others manifest their love and devotion to the mother of Jesus throughout the whole world. But we, along with that, we see an increase of devotion to Our Lady in this age of Mary. We must also have an authentic truth about Mary. And yet our Blessed Mother with her arms outstretched continually intercedes for her children. And when we think about it, when Our Lady comes down from heaven to appear to particular individuals, she is both warning and consoling the world. warning us that mankind must change his ways and consoling us with the reassurance that the Christian promise of eternal life is not a myth 
but only a solid reality that we can look forward to. The Marian apparitions, and particularly here in Fatima, are a decisive call to listen again to Christ, her son, and to the church. It is the great promise held by them that the world will see true peace, a new evangelization of love, and that should all encourage us to continuously pray for the conversion of sinners. And yet we must have the courage to pick up the rosary daily and pray as our Blessed Mother has asked of us. Here in this sacred spot where the Most Holy Virgin Mary appeared, let us present our prayers to God our Father, who gave us the mother of his Son to be our mother. For all the faithful, that by obeying the appeals of Mary, in a spirit of true penance and prayer, they may work wholeheartedly for the renewal of the world and for the kingdom of Christ. Lord, hear us. For those who exercise sacred ministry in the church, that they may be attentive to the word of God, love it and proclaim it with fidelity and enthusiasm as Mary did. Lord, hear us. For those who govern our nations, that they may work for justice and peace in the world and harmlessly collaborate with the justice distribution of the earthly goods among all the inhabitants of the world. Lord, hear us. For those who suffer, that in union with Mary, consoler of the afflicted, and the loving care of others, and in the contemplation of the cross of Christ, they may find courage to face life. Lord, hear us. For all of us here present today and for our families, for our nation and for our cities, that by the intercession of Mary, those who seek Christ may find him, sinners may be converted, young people may open their hearts with enthusiasm to the gospel. Lord, hear us. We remember, especially in this holy place, all those who have gone before us marked with the sign of faith. Lord, hear us. God of infinite goodness, attentive to the supplications of your people, and with the prayers of Mary, the mother of your son and mother of the church, to help us listen to our pleas and increase our faith, we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed to you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. 
fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed to you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father, the Almighty. Lord, we offer you these gifts in preparation and of praise, so that in celebrating the feast of the Blessed Virgin Mary, you may absolve us from our sins and guide our wavering hearts. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and Father all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks as we celebrate the feast of the Blessed Virgin Mary and praise you for your gifts. She receiving your word in her immaculate heart, merited to conceive him in her virginal womb and giving birth to the creator of the world, she prepared the birth of the church. She, in receiving at the foot of the cross the testament of divine charity, received all men as her children, born to eternal life through the death of Christ. She, when the apostles were awaiting the coming of the Holy Spirit, the promised one united her supplications to the prayers of the disciples, and thus became the model of the supplant church. So then finally, elevated to the glory of heaven, surrounds with her maternal love the pilgrim church and loving directs their steps to their heavenly dwelling place until the glorious coming of the Lord. And so with all the angels and saints, we proclaim your glory and join in their unending hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. You never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to a setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. And therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, for the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. From the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. And therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity a pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope, the Bishop of our Diocese, the Order of Bishops, or the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for you. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion and merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom, and there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours for ever. the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant us peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring his everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. Lord, having received with joy these heavenly sacraments, grant us, we pray you, that they may lead us to eternal life, where we may rejoice forever with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of your Son and mother of the Church. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to glorify the Lord by your life.